just <laughs> see where it goes. Be a conversation. Okay. Okay. Go you know, I, I ended up just having you tell your. So. All right. We good? Yeah, it's okay. recording, so you're. All right. Uh, thank you for meeting with me, Laura. This is Laura Snipes of Rochester. Mm -hmm. And you have memories of downtown Rochester that we want to document so we can share with future generations and people who live here now. Uh, what do you remember about downtown Rochester? Oh my, it was a busy place and in fact uh, Friday evenings there would be people come early, park on the main street, get their favorite parking place so they could watch the people walk back and forth as they did their shopping. Sure. We had everything really. Yeah. So, uh, and the, the only couple I remember specifically were Turrell and Everett Kessler. And they had to be right in front of what used to be Baxter's, it is now Webb's. Because okay. that was a prime spot to see all the people. So, mm -hmm. so that's back when it was a busy, busy time. What, what era, what time frame is this? Um, 50s. Okay. Early 60s. Mm -hmm. And some of the... Uh, shops that I list, I'm not sure when they came and went, but if we start like at 6th Street, uh, where the Evergreen is, Walt Bowen mm -hmm. had that for many, many years, okay. and uh, he served mostly farmers, and then of course when Gunters bought it, it became okay. a more upscale restaurant, but it, they kept it as the Evergreen. It was still the Evergreen Cafe. Right, right, right. In... yep. And then uh, across the street from the um, cafe was... Um, Ford Motor Company, and that's where they sold their vehicles. Okay. And next to that, that was the Manitow Bar, which is now a Ruthless Bar. That I think that's always been a bar. Right. And we had good old Beale's Tire Shop. And if you didn't know Ansel Beale, you you didn't know the flavor of the community. He was he was a great guy. Then the next one I remember is the Hamburger Hut. I'm probably skipping through some of the storefronts because I don't remember what was mm -hmm. there. Then of course we had the Times Theater. And uh, Cook Brothers Furniture and Carpet, and that brings us to the corner of Seventh and Main Street. Okay. And and I'm on the west side when I'm talking about this. So from right. Seventh to Eighth was Schultz Five and Dime Store. That was there on the corner, right? Right, right okay. on the corner, which was a treasure trove for young kids. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was Teetle Bombs, and I think it was a dress store and maybe some other things too. But someone else would have to give you more information on that. Mm -hmm. Then there's Blumenthal's, Bailey's Hardware, and I think the next big building was Carnes Coffee Shop. Okay. It was somewhere in there, and it, that may have been before Bailey's, on the on the north side of Bailey's. A little confused on some of that. So we okay. also had Moda Day that Carolyn Rhodes uh, owned. We had Feltz's Bar, which was a men's only bar. Women couldn't go in except to pick up orders of they were known for their hamburgers, so yeah. you could go in if you ordered food. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we weren't allowed in there. So, I remember I talked to John Little, and he told me that his they would go up and his dad would pick up hamburgers from yes. Feltz, Feltz's on the way home. Yep, very very good place to get food, and that was right next to Baxter's, and after Baxter's, which became Webb's, was Taylor's had a shoe store. Okay. And they also, interestingly enough, had a shoe store on the other side of the street, Taylor's Shoe Store. So why they had two, I don't know if anyone ever asked <laughs> them, but it was there. And then on the corner was uh, First National Bank, okay, which became Cobbler's Corner, and then mm -hmm. uh, it's just empty now. Yeah. So if you go from 8th Street on south, the Blue Drug Store was on the corner, and the yeah. Boston Store was right in there somewhere, and it was a big store, a big department store. And uh, Brown and Brown Law Office had a their office above the Boston store. That's the only one I remember. Okay. And I think there was a store called Tots to Teens in that area. There was hmm. a store. And the reason I remember that is because um, my sisters and I were in a style show at the Times Theater. And this was early 50s. Okay. And it was sponsored by Tots to Teens store. Mm -hmm. And we won the grand prize. <laughs> the three of us. And then there was Adler's, but I think that was a little bit later, and it was a women's store. Okay. And I think Wally's jewelry store was down in that area. And then you get to the end, which it started out as Kroger's had their store there. And then Torchy okay. Knapp built our own, very own skyscraper. That's when we had the three-story okay. building. Okay. 
Right. Yeah. And then right across the street from Knapp's was a sports spot where they sold uh, baseball bats and mm -hmm. things like that. So that's that side of the road. You want me to go down from 6th Street on for on the east side? You, you touched on the Taylor's shoes on both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. It takes me, makes me think of a conversation I had with Harry Webb. He said that um, Baxter's own, you know, where he's at now, mm -hmm. and then the Blue Drug Store, Baxter's had bought that one after they were had retired or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Baxter's actually had both drugstores. So if somebody, they, I don't know if it was a phone or a radio or how, but somebody came in and they wanted something down at the other store, they'd have a runner that would run, oh. run and get the <laughs> others. I had kind of forgotten that they bought that. And then of course they must have just liquidated it after a while. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. The only other drugstore then at that time was Heisler's out by 9th and Wabash Avenue. Okay. So they kind of had a monopoly on the drug business. Sure. But that's okay. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And then in, spattered in between on the main street, various restaurants that would come and go and, um, you know, gas stations. They were kind of downtown too, which seems odd for us now. Everything scatters mm -hmm. out. It's like when I was talking about uh, the auto dealerships, they were all downtown. Uh, you know, Louderbacks was where the fitness center is, and you know, Caddy Corner mm -hmm. was Ford, and it was um, the Louderback Chevrolet, I think. And yes. then didn't they have a Buick store where the Cuban restaurant is now? Well, they could have. I don't remember that. Yeah. But Tom Baldwin had one on Eighth Street, about where the Sentinel is, and okay. uh, he sold Oldsmobile. Mm -hmm. Loris Barkman sold Kaiser Fraser. Arnie had to tell me Fraser. I have no idea what kind of a car that is. Our first car was a Kaiser. Okay. So I know what that is, but uh, and his his place was on East Fourth, right where the Ford dealership is now. Okay. But it's just interesting to me that they could sell cars like that in such a small area, but not many people bought cars. Yeah. In fact, Cloris Barkman told me once that when he first started in his uh, dealership, someone would come in and say, "You really can't afford that car. You shouldn't be buying it." He said. They just go somewhere else, and I got smart in a hurry. I, if they wanted the car, I sold it to them, whether they could afford <laughs> it or not. So, uh, anyway, uh, let's see. I'll go back to 6th Street on the east side. There was that gas station, and I'm mm -hmm. not sure how long it's been there, but a long time. And then you had the American Legion and the Eagles, and Pam and Louise Dance Studio was, a, it was a, on the upper floor at the Eagles. Okay. And, uh, of course, the American Legion built out on 25 and that didn't work so they're back there mm -hmm. but the Eagles has built and sent so I don't think there's anything in that at all Miller's auto parts store was right in there somewhere and I'm not real sure where it was I think on the uh, on the south side of the Eagles before okay. they put that little strip mall in there where uh, flirt and all okay. that is yeah right and then of course we had the famous Arlington Hotel right at the corner of 7th and Main sure do you remember that it burned yeah. in 75. Was it still a hotel at that time, or was well, it Wiles the store? I think store? they did, yeah. It, Wiles had it down below, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, yeah. But they still had hotel rooms. Well, I think they might have had, um, for people who didn't have any place to go, okay. they would rent rooms, but I don't think it had been a hotel, and I can't tell you for how long. Right. And uh, I remember hearing lots of stories about people buying bus tickets, and the, the, the bus stopped at I the... I forgot that, yes. And there was a man that had a little popcorn stand on the corner, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of a busy corner. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, when the Arlington Hotel burned, there was a man who lived a, a block east of there, and he was drank quite a bit, mm -hmm. and he'd passed out in the backyard. And when he awakened, there were ashes coming down around him, and he thought he'd died and gone down south. Oh, no. <laughs> and it sobered him up. He <laughs> quit drinking after that. It was just ash from the Arlington Hotel yeah. burning. So that's the story I heard, whether that's true or not, <laughs> but it makes a good story. Sure. So then right in that area, too, was Snyder's Jewelry Store and, and then some restaurants and Main Street Tavern, which uh, Mr. Yeah. Burkett owned for many, many years, and they were famous for their pork sandwiches. They had okay. really good food. And then Wilson's Clothing Store, that was kind of a high-end store for women and men. Okay. They had Pendleton and things like that. Hmm. And then the Farmers and Merchants Bank was on the corner. Okay. So that's pretty much the downtown. Yeah. 
and then the courthouse then has yeah. always been where it is. Right, right. The New York Candy Kitchen was then on that first corner where mm -hmm. the smoke shop is now, and I get a little muddy on what uh, Morris Shoe Store was down in there somewhere. Okay. And, but, uh, yeah, we were a thriving little community. The automobile ruined our <laughs> prosperous little <laughs> Main Street. But that being said, um, when people from uh, I meet find out that I'm from Rochester, they'll say, oh, my gosh, my husband, their husbands come and golf while they mm. shop and go out to eat. And they say, we've just got so many good places to eat here and yeah. shop. You know, we've got a lot of nice boutiques. So I yeah. think the city's making an effort to to make things work, and it draws people in. Yeah. So I'm proud of where we are. And yeah. We've got a lot of room to grow, but uh, sure. And I'd love to be a part of any any walking tour that you had sometime. Okay. Um, the only other thing I would touch on is uh, the grocery stores that we had mm -hmm. before we had cars. When I was real little, we we I, I can't even remember for sure when we got a car. Maybe about 1956 or 57. Mm -hmm. So we would walk to town, and when we were little, real little, would take a wagon and pull us in it. But uh, so every every neighborhood had a grocery store, and ours was Halderman's at Fourth and Indiana okay. Avenue. There was Third Street Grocery between Pontiac and Fulton. There was Packard's over on Fourteenth and College. What's the last one? Oh, Days, where Nubianos is. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we had lots of little neighborhood grocery stores, and as and then, I say, when we got cars and could drive, yeah, we drove away from the neighborhoods. And, you know, there's pluses and minuses. Uh, we ended up with better prices because you could go to a bigger store that could offer more, right. more variety and a little bit cheaper. And But that's how ch things change from the small towns to the great big ones. Mm -hmm. So I remember hearing about uh, A and P and yes. Kroger. Were and those were those around the same time as all the neighborhood right. grocery stores? Well, it was more of it was a bigger store rather than your neighborhood grocery store. Mm -hmm. I forgot A and P. It was right on the other side of the Evergreen. Okay. In that building that uh, uh, Figlio has now. Okay. Rick Figlio has that. Yeah, we shopped there a lot then too. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> And my husband was telling me about, you know, and you talk about how restaurants have changed. He used to go to one that was on Madison Street. He thought between 5th and, or 6th and 7th, and it was called uh, Bertha's or Berthy's, something like that. And you'd mm. just go in and sit down, and they'd serve you whatever they were cooking that day. It was just like being at home. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. But just little interesting things like that. I think we have a great little town. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Uh, for the. Yeah. So.